it's already 6 pm so a very good evening to all of you today's topic is experience which will be conducted by the most profound knowledgeable rci certified special educator arpita bhattacharya a hearty welcome to you arpita thank you so much for the session let me thank give you. a short most welcome let me give a short introduction of arpita Arpita is presently working as a consultant for autism intervention and educator, childhood neurodevelopmental disorders. She has been into handling cases with academic, sociomotor, sensory difficulties, especially children with ASD, ADHD, LD, and ID for the past 12 years in special schools and psychiatric clinic setup. She had been assistant professor in RCI training college and guest faculty for, for various institutions and academic mentor for rehab professionals and clinician for nine years. So let us all enjoy the wonderful session with Arpita. Arpita, now it's completely yours. Please take it ahead. Thank you, Shushmita. Um... Welcome. I just want to ask uh, first that uh, how the screen is visible. Uh, you're seeing slides at the side? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, but is it clear or should I get into individual slides more? Uh, yes, it's clear from my end and I hope others can also uh, see it clearly. Is it uh, clear to all of you? Yeah, okay. Me. okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Naina, thank you. Yeah, Jyoti. Okay, so um, I think we can begin now. Uh, yeah. Today's topic is uh, we would try to understand the range of the spectrum, autism spectrum disorders as the term goes, the nomenclature goes. Why we call it autism spectrum disorders and we don't call it just autism. Why? So uh, there is a definite medical reason behind it. It might get a bit technical and with a lot of medical jargons. Uh, I would try my best to simplify it as much as possible in uh, the language which we can all understand. So Let's see. If it gets too difficult, you can definitely ask me and um, I'll try to simplify it more. But as you can understand that uh, this spectrum, if I'm explaining the spectrum, it's a, it's a medical issue. So uh, there will be terms related to uh, something which we are not very familiar with. So uh, to start with, um, as the topic, I have kept it like ASD and variants. First, we need to understand that variants term is very important over here because each and in each individual diagnosed with autism is actually unique and different from each other. That is why we are putting them on a spectrum. So. If this is the spectrum, so at this end, somebody can be with very mild symptoms and the spectrum can go like this and here end can have someone with very, very severe symptoms. But both are diagnosed with autis autism and both are having some common difficulties. But at the same time, they are also different from each other. So this is the issue. Every individual with the diagnosis of autism is different from the other individual with the same diagnosis. That's why this issue of variant is coming into and, that's the, and there the challenge lies. So if you have seen any person or any child with autism in your life, then you have seen actually a single person with autism. The next time you will meet someone else with autism diagnosis, you will find that person is totally different from this person. So there lies the 
challenge of this diagnosis and uh, uniqueness. So, uh, I assume that you know what is autism. To put in a very simple language, it is a neurological disorder. It has, uh, when a person is having some processing difficulties in the neural path in the brain and spinal cord. So it's a neurological, complex neurological disorder. And um, it is present since the time you're born. So it's not that that you will develop autism after age 10. It won't happen. So you're born with autism. It's not that, uh, that um, you are facing some family issues in your life and you are under stress. That's why you are developing autism. No, that can't happen. So autism is there with you at the time you are born. And it is a lifelong condition. It will go on till you leave. There is no medication. There is no scientific method to cure autism. There is no surgery for autism. So what we do, the professionals, the therapists, uh, they try to put the child in some management programs so that the child becomes manageable and can develop some uh, skills, life skills, which will help him to live his life independently as much as possible according to the child's potential. So we have to take care of that. Every child's potential is different. So every child will be, the prognosis will be also different. The prognosis means what will be the outcome of the training. The outcome of the training for everyone will not be the same. And the training methods and modules will also not be the same. So there are so many variants. And so each and every individual, we can give some management techniques and therapies which will soothe them down, which will help them to understand the surroundings better, which will help them to gain concepts better. They might... Uh, you know, feel a little bit safe and secured and uh, they might un start understanding the world around them and respond to that. So we are doing things as professionals, as rehab professionals to manage the severe symptoms. We can minimize the intensity of those symptoms, but we cannot cure autism. If anybody in this world right now is claiming that with this medicine or with this therapy or with this surgery, stem cell therapy, a lot of things are there. All this, we can, we are claiming that we will be curing autism, that that is not true. So as professionals, our first job is to guide the parents, the primary caregivers properly, that these are the things you can do. These are the things you better not do. So this guidance is very important because most of them just run here and there and they get misgu misguided a lot of time. So this is in brief, this is what I wanted to put in that autism is a neurological condition. It's there from birth. And what are the major difficulties? Now the coming to the major difficulties, um, Okay, I cannot move the slide. So coming to the major difficulties, uh, this slide, I, I will explain to you what is this all about. The major difficulties are in three areas. The first one is the communication area. There will be speech difficulties. There will be difficulty in understanding language we speak generally. There will be difficulties with um, understanding social cues. Like the, uh, you can make out from most of us, we can usually make out from our facial expressions that whether we are feeling happy or whether we are feeling sad. Um, 
Yeah. Yes, Aisha. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of text in this particular slide because it's the DSM five criteria. Just a sec. Okay now. It's better, Arpita. Yeah, it's uh, enlarged. I think you have enlarged the screen, so it's better. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, that in DSM five, uh, the criteria for autism spectrum disorder is given. So, uh, what is DSM five? I would come to it. DSM five is the medical book. Uh, that we all follow for the diagnosis of various conditions related to mental health as well as neurological conditions. So it's a medical book where the diagnostic criteria on which basis we can diagnose a certain person with this, this, this condition that is, that is mentioned over there. So in DSM-5, we can see that this criteria is given for autism spectrum disorder. Five is the addition, okay? We will be talking about DSM-4 also today because there has been certain changes from four to five and why these changes have been made. So I would be discussing that part. So DSM-5 uh, is the current criteria we are following. DSM-4 was the earlier one. So there have been certain modifications from four to five. So currently, uh, ASD must meet this criteria of A, B, C, D. What do we have in A? In A, we have persistent deficits in social communication. So the child with autism diagnosis must be having deficits in social communication. The child won't be communicating socially age appropriately. If the child is five years old, he is not communicating uh, as per age. He is not understanding social cues as per age. So there will be deficits in social emotional reciprocity, deficits in nonverbal communicating behaviors, and developing maintaining relationships. Now, nonverbal, <clears throat> sorry, nonverbal relationships, uh, communication is very, very important. <clears throat> Most of us always focus a lot on the verbal communication, that's the speech that the child is speaking or not. Does he speak? No, okay. But we don't uh, put a focus on the nonverbal cues. Can the child express his needs without speaking? This is a very, very important question to the parents. If the parents say, yes, yes, I can understand that. Yeah, when he is thirsty, then he just shows me, okay, I need to drink water. Well, that's a nonverbal communication. We are not speaking. We are using our gestures. We are frowning uh, with our eye and facial expressions. We are communicating what we want to do. But the issue over here is that the concerning factor is when a child is having deficit in both verbal and nonverbal communication. That is the most concerning factor. The ch a child is having deficit in nonverbal communication is a concerning factor. A child not having speech but can express himself or herself fully with nonverbal communication, then the concern is less. We can expect that the child will very soon be talking. But when the nonverbal communication is also not there, 
then it's a real, real red flag sign that the child is having serious issue with it. We must have the need and interest for communication first. Speech is the secondary one. Speech comes after that. First, the need and intention, the interest for communication that should be present. In case of autism, this need and interest for communication is lacking in most of the time. Okay. And when, when you come to the B section, you will find there are repetitive patterns of behavior we are talking about. Very stereotypical, repetitive pattern of behavior, same motor activity do, going on for ritualistic pattern of behavior, you know, adherence to routine, cannot accept change of place, person, even surroundings, objects, limited interests, uh, activities, same activity going on for hours. Maybe the child is just sitting with a piece of rope and just shaking it in front of his eyes and just engrossed in it for hours. So this kind of fixed interest, limited interest, repetitive patterns, stereotypical motor movements like hand flapping, a very common uh, repetitive motor movement we can see in case of autism. It can be like this, at the corner of the eyes, they're taking the stimulation, the visual stimulation coming as well as the joint motor stimulation going on in your hand. If we do it for some time, we will feel the pain in our hand, but they won't. So there, and there will be hyper or hypo reactivity to sensory input. Uh, I will briefly cover the sensory part. So, and number C is symptoms must be present in early childhood. As I said, we are born with that but may not be fully manifested until social demands become complex. So it might happen that, uh, okay, it's two years old, but okay, the severity is not that much to worry about. That might happen because the parents, the caregivers, they don't have the clinical eye. So naturally, most of them don't get diagnosed below two years. But uh, the symptoms, the difficulties have to be present since birth. And symptoms together limit and impair everyday functioning. Of course, the symptoms must be severe enough to actually obstruct or put a hindrance to your personal, occupational and social life. Daily living will come to a halt. That kind of severity is needed. It's not that you're managing everything, then you won't be getting uh, diagnosed with the disorder. So these are, this is the criteria which has been mentioned by DSM-5. And primarily, uh, we will be focusing on it a lot because DSM-5 marks a lot of change over there. Uh, can you, is the screen okay? No, Arpita. I think uh, we have removed it. Yeah. Okay. So as I was talking about that this DSM-5 criteria uh, this DSM-5 criteria, if we keep in mind that there will be deficit in social communication, there will be deficit in language, there will be deficit in non-verbal communication as well, there will be repetitive patterns, fixed interests, limited interest and same motor movements going on for long. There will be sensory issues. Now, let me explain you sensory issues. We all know about five sense, sense organs, right? In case of autism or when we are dealing with uh, dealing it medically, then we have to consider seven systems. So we all know this, this one. This is olfactory for the nose. This is auditory for ears, eyes, vision, test, gustatory, the tongue part and um, the skin, so that's the tactile. Now, there are two hidden ones. One is the proprioceptive 
proprioceptive means the muscles and joints and the other one is vestibular which is the balance system so when i'm climbing stairs it's my vestibular system is working so there's the balance going on uh when i am enjoying a swing it's the vestibular system working when i am buttoning my shirt this is my fine joints and muscles so it's a proprioceptive system working over there so anything i'm doing with small muscles and the bigger muscles so those are the proprioceptive system so in all the seven sensory areas a person with autism might face difficulty in receiving sensory input and processing it properly so a major issue with autism is sensory disintegration this is the major issue for which sensory integration therapy becomes a must for them so i can give you just one example like as we are talking over here correct okay we are talking in natural voices and it's it's not that disturbing right but it might happen for a child with autism hypersensitive to the auditory system this might feel the child might feel that a simple talking in a room is as loud as a microphone playing on his ears it's just the mic i'm talking about we are having in public places for the festivals that kind of loud noise so now you imagine if you are having this mic uh, in your ears playing so loudly will you be able to be calm and stable it's possible it won't be possible actually we will just run we will cry we will scream we might jump we might slap someone so the sensory issue is that severe with them and from there comes odd behavioral issues we find them oh why he is screaming so much he cannot take the sound that's going on around so the behavioral issues we we as professionals try to discriminate what is the behavior behavioral factor and the sensorial factor because the management is totally different if if a behavior issue is coming up then uh, it has to be behaviorally managed and if it's a sensory issue then it has to be sensory integration therapy so the management is very different so what i'm trying to say is that that the sensory difficulties is a major major challenge for the persons on the spectrum that is why they cannot process half of the things the other severe can also be there that they are taking loud sound so much so they are hyposensitive so you can have hypo in hyposensitivity you will take a external stimulus a lot that person will enjoy lot of high swings for a long time the person who is having hyposensitivity in vestibular system on the other extreme the person who is having hyper uh, sensitivity in the vestibular system will not cannot even sit on a swing for one second so this is the range i'm talking about both are diagnosed with autism but both are so very different in their behavioral ways why the reason behind this the sensorial difficulties are different for each one of them we can have a person with autism with no sensorial difficulty at all we can have a person with autism with hypo a uh, sensitivity in one or two of the sensory system out of seven the rest five are fine we can have a person with autism with hypo sensitivity in all the seven systems we can have a person with autism as hyper sensitive in all the seven systems we can have combination we can have single we can have with no difficulty so as you can understand there is no norm for it so each and every individual will be presenting with a different set of 
difficulties and complaints. That's why the range we are talking about, this is the range we uh, will get into. So is it is it more, more or less clear that what a person with autism might face, we will get into it more and more with the more slides. And what is the time for, thanks Aisha, what is the time for uh, diagnosis? It's present since birth, I said, it's lifelong condition. And it must affect your regular daily activity functioning. This is very important. Otherwise, it can't be diagnosed. So these are the, to put in a nutshell, this is the issue. Now, coming to this umbrella part, as you can see this umbrella, uh, this is as per DSM-4. So I, I was talking about DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Uh, edition four, uh, there we had this picture, uh, not this picture, this concept of autism spectrum disorders. So it's an umbrella term, it's a spectrum, it's a range, uh, which covers all these disorders under the same umbrella. So we had autistic disorder, which is autism, Asperger's disorder, childhood disintegrative disorder, which we call in short CDD, Rett's disorder and pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, which is PDD NOS. So one, two, three, four, five. So all these five disorders were listed under ASD in DSM-4, the last edition. Why the last edition is important? It is important because still some of the terms are being followed and uh, uh, professional in the professional uh, world there uh, we actually signify with this term some of the features so this is still on the um, flow it's not that it's totally it has been totally erased out it's not it doesn't happen that way so it's a smooth flow from four to five it's we are still continuing with that so now coming to dsm4 so dsm4 so using DSM-4, patients could be diagnosed with four separate disorders like autistic, Asperger's, childhood disintegrative, or the catch-all diagnosis of pervasive developmental disorder. So four, and then lastly comes PDD-NOS. I will be getting into each one of them with the concept, what is the difference? Okay, so the dif difference is we will start with CDD. Childhood Disintegrative Disorder. So we have discussed a bit about autism, right? With DSM-5, we have discussed about autism. What are the areas we should be concerned about? For CDD, just see the bold words, which I have marked bold, that a typically developing child. So since birth, a child is developing typically. That means the developmental milestones are going perfect for the child. Over two years of age, undergo a severe and mostly irreversible regression of developmental gains, including speech, sociability, and self-help skills. So a child is born and the child is perfect. The child is growing perfect till two years of age. After two years, the child is now losing out the skills which he has already learned. That's what we called regression. Regression is a term which we use for lost skills. The skills were present at a certain time, but it got lost after that. So there is regression of skills after two years of age in the child, and this is irreversible regression. That means the skills will never ever come back. Irreversible regression. No matter uh, how much we um, try and manage and do whatever therapeutically, but the skills won't come back again in the child's life. So irreversible regression of developmental gains in the sphere of speech, social skills, self-help skills, personal skills. Like self-help means like all this eating, dressing, brushing, you know, wearing your dress, toileting, 
eating food, drinking water, all those are self-help skills. So this is what CDD is all about. So a child is born fine, till two years of age, everything went fine. After that, there is a severe regression of skills, which is irreversible, will never come back in the areas of social speech and self-help. Okay. Now I'm coming to, then what is the difference, CDD and autism? Because remember, they were under the same, um, same umbrella in DSM-4. Difference is that in CDD, there will be low IQ, that is the intelligent quotients. There is a marked intellectual dis disability in CDD. The child will be having more epileptic attacks in CDD. The regression is faster. As I said, the loss skills will be quite severe in CDD. More mental health problems and symptoms will arise. Will define the child as the child goes up and there will be a global developmental deficit. Global developmental deficit means there will be deficit in every areas. Social skill, communication skill, personal skills, intelligence, all the areas will be affected and there will be a global developmental deficit in the child. The child will be functioning below average in all the aspects of life. Okay, not age appropriate functioning. So this is the difference from, from CDD and autism. Now why the difference is there? Because as I said, it's very important to understand that um, though all these conditions are under the same umbrella, why they are under the same umbrella? Because they have some features common in them. That's why they have been put together in a group called ASD. But they are individually different from each other because they are also unique in their own ways. That's why they are having different, different diagnosis name. Otherwise we could have called everyone autism, right? We are not saying that. Why we are saying, th saying that this child is having CDD and not autism? Because there are certain unique differences. That is why we call differential diagnosis. What is differential diagnosis? When we are differentiating one condition from the other, to reach to a certain diagnosis, we have to, if, if two kids are in front of me, kid A and kid B, then I have to differential diagnose them. Kid A is having CDD, kid B is having rates or whatever. So, so this is differential diagnosis that I'm differentiating the conditions on the basis of symptoms, severity, duration, a lot of things are there. Okay. Now, um, as I said, in DSM-4, that umbrella was there. Now coming to DSM-5, in DSM-5 right now, it is merged in the fifth edition, CDD is merged into autism spectrum disorder. CDD has a relatively late onset and causes regression, as I said. So in DSM-5, we don't have a separate diagnosis for CDD. I'm repeating, in DSM-4, we had a separate diagnosis for CDD under the umbrella of ASD. In DSM-5, there is no separate diagnosis for CDD. No child will be now diagnosed with CDD. That has been merged with autism spectrum disorder, so no separate diagnosis is met right now. So that's a major change over there. Now I'm coming to the other one, which is the Asperger disorder. Now Asperger, you have, I can say a movie name, My Name is Khan by Shah Rukh Khan. Okay, so there Shah Rukh Khan was having Asperger's disorder. Now why I'm saying the movie name? Because you can relate to it, the character. So how the character was speaking, he was having a difficulty with a yellow color, so you will find some repetitive stereotypical speech pattern, not understanding the, uh, you know, the 
meaning between the lines they take words very literally i'm i'm just reminding you of um, one of the sharukh khan scenes that whenever kajol says that okay i'll die and he says don't die don't die don't die so he takes it very seriously that okay this person will die so so the words taken by them very very literally like as we say that uh, if i they won't be understanding pun they won't be understanding humor they won't be understanding in a meaning of the same word you know one word having different meanings those will be very very difficult for them to comprehend they have a monotonous pattern of speech in the same tone they will be talking no tonal variation with emotional variation so um, there are certain issues with asperger's disorders asperger's disorder in a simple way for your takeaway is high functioning autistic kid high functioning group uh, who are having high iqs who can do um, well the functional uh, ability is much better than the, the autism population so that's asperger so there will be social skill deficit definitely as you can see in the slide the deficit in eye to eye gaze as you can remember the sharukh khan was look, was not directly looking at somebody's eyes eye contact difficulty was there he was using a handy cam to look through so this direct eye contact is difficult facial expressions understanding facial expressions of others body postures gestures as i said social cues body cues they won't be able to comprehend that you have to just say directly i am angry at you otherwise they won't understand that you are angry at them so failure to develop peer relationships age appropriate peer relationships are absent developmental level is there and um you know spontaneous seeking to share enjoyment interest like lack of showing or bringing pointing at objects this is a very difficult area of in autism spectrum disorder joint attention pointing what is joint attention when we share the same stimulus together so we what do we do with the kids while feeding oh there's the plane flight going on in the sky and looks up at the sky following my point a child with autism won't be able to do that they lack in joint attention they won't be attending things jointly with you so uh, they won't be following your pointing and looking at the fan or flower um, birds flying or aeroplane flying that won't happen and there will be lack of social and emotional reciprocity obviously it's very difficult for them to understand what other persons are feeling it is also difficult for them to express what they are feeling so these are the issues we have restrictive repetitive behavior is definitely there otherwise it won't come under asd umbrella right so preoccupation with one or more interests like uh, some of them are having wonderful calendar skills they can do back calculation very well uh, like if you ask them that uh, what was the day uh, in 1945 14 june he will just say wednesday and just check it it's right so they have such splinter skills uh, with which they can do such back calculations and tell you in 1945 19 june was a wednesday so that kind of thing they can do they can they have certain neural paths working fantastically uh, which uh, average people won't be able to do it so the spike will be very different what i want to say is that in cdd i was saying that there will be a global developmental deficit if this is the appropriate one cdd child will be here much below average performing in every sphere of life asperger will be somewhat like this in some aspects they will be above average some aspect average some aspect below average so they are not having global developmental deficit the the graph with all the aspects of life will be like a spike over there you know like this it won't be a flat line below average so the performance level will be very very different from a cdd to aspergers though they all will be having deficits in social language communication repetitive behaviors will be present those things will be present for all the conditions under that umbrella 
but still there is a lot of difference among them. Okay, as you can see the repetitive motor movements, as I said, finger flapping, finger twisting, something like this, it, it gives them, you know, this lot of, if you do it, you will find that this fine short muscles are getting strained up. So this is a kind of my body sensory need actually. So that's why they're doing it. So this kind of things will be there, but still there will be a lot of differences. Okay. Um, now this is important to note as I have marked it, that there is no clinically significant general delay in language for Asperger's. So there is no speech delay for Asperger's syndrome. Single words used by two, two years. Yes, they can use single words by two years and uh, they can use communicative phrase. They can talk by three years. So there is no clinical significant, significant delay in cognitive development or in the development of age appropriate self-help skills. They are good with their self-help skills also. Adaptive behavior. So they can adapt to situations also. They are social, but there will be some oddities which you can understand socially, behavioral wise, sensory issues. Uh, like I said, uh, in my name is Khan Shahrukh was having difficulty with yellow color. This is a sensory issue. He cannot take in yellow color. There was a phobia also with the yellow color. So this kind of certain oddities will be present. As you can remember the way Shahrukh was speaking the entire movie, it is a monotone speech. So there was no speech variation. So those things will be there, but the speech is present. So in Asperger, there is no as such marked speech delay. They are good with self-help skills also. So these are the minor differences which we need to point out while doing it. Now, so what are the three bell ringers you can take away? Impaired social interaction, especially difficulty with social reciprocity. That's the Asperger difficulty. Idiosyncratic interest or activity, something it's very unusual that would attract them. They are not actually interested in something very average people are interested in. So something unusual they are into. Odd mechanically, mechanical or socially inappropriate speech pattern. I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat, 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 eat. They will just rock their body and may just, you know, repeat the same words again and again. It's a, it's a, it's a very different kind of speech pattern they're having. It's not the way we converse usually. So this kind of, uh, these are the three bell ringers I've put for diagnosis of Asperger. So if you are having this three, then you we can go with that. Now uh, in DSM-5, what happened? In DSM-4, as we remember, in DSM-4, we had this umbrella and Asperger was uh, within that umbrella, actually. And in DSM-5, Asperger syndrome is technically no longer a diagnosis on its own. So marked in bold. So now Asperger is not a separate broader category for diagnosis. Now we diagnose it as ASD. So it's now ASD. It's no more Asperger disorder separately. But see the last line why I'm discussing. Uh, but people and clinicians still use the term for specificity. So it's like it's a very common thing for us to discuss that, oh, I saw that child, yeah, that day clinic, uh, he is ASPI. We call like that, he is ASPI. So why we are saying ASPI to signify the specificity? What is the specificity we are talking about? That the child is good with the language part. There's no delay, there's no regression. IQ is high, high functioning autistic, but definitely difficulty with social and communication things. Speech is odd monotonic and all of this. So I'm not saying all of the symptoms to another professional. Obviously, we don't talk much because we know the terms. So what do we say? We say that he's, he's having Asperger's. So this kind of uh, uh, terminology is still in use. 
that's why I'm referring to DSM-4. Uh, um, even on doctor's prescription uh, or something of that, uh, it's written that uh, as P query. This is written, still this is written. So this is why this specificity uh, in order to uh, denote that we use the term still unofficially. Um, Aisha, so why that specificity has been removed? It was easier, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely it was easier, Aisha. And we are waiting that DSM-6 will come with, again, inclusion of Asperger as a dif different diagnosis. Maybe, may not. But uh, as clinicians, it was easier for us. Definitely it was. Now it's, it's more like all under ASD. It's all ASD. No other specific broader categories. Okay, I didn't see Jyoti said, please switch off your video at 6.31. I think uh, there was some problem going on that time. Is it? I think it's okay right now. Yeah, yeah Rupita, you can go ahead. It was me who just uh, asked Jyoti to switch off the video as she was moving here and there. So it was creating a little bit disturbance for us. Okay. Okay, so now I'm coming to um, the next one, which is the Rates syndrome. Now, Rates is a very rare. Uh, yes, yes, Aisha, I got, I got your point. I got your point. We are just, I just said unofficially we are using the terms for our own specificity. So, uh, red syndrome is a rare genetic neurological. You won't be finding red syndrome much, actually. The percentage is very, very low, thankfully. Thankfully, because it's a very severe condition. Uh, it's a rare genetic neurological and developmental disorder that affects the way the brain develops. And this disorder causes a progressive loss of motor skills and language skills. Red syndrome primarily affects females. Very important. Most babies with Rett syndrome seem to develop as expected for the first six months of life. So the regression starts after six months. In rates, the severity is very, very high. And uh, why I'm saying that you won't be seeing Rett syndrome much in your environment, because most of the Rett's population are so severe that they cannot come outside the house also. So most of them are bedridden, bedbound kind of population. That's why you cannot see them a lot in the society roaming around. So it's a very, very severe condition. So uh, DSM-5 definitely introduced two major changes we will be talking about. Number one, please remember, it merged all of the diagnoses that were under pervasive category, that umbrella into a singular term into autism spectrum in DSM-5. So we are not having that umbrella anymore in DSM-5. In DSM-4, we had that umbrella with the five conditions under the umbrella. In DSM-5, the umbrella is no more. It's just autism spectrum disorders. That's it. It eliminated two diagnostic entities. So two elimination. CDD and Rett syndrome is no more our diagnostic criteria in DSM-5. So no child will be diagnosed with CDD and Rett's anymore, ever. They are all under ASD. So Rett was originally included in DSM because it was a disorder with autistic features for an unknown cause. Now the genetic cause has been identified and the rationale for removing Rett that it is more, it is having its own distinct entity. Now, this is a good news, uh, good news because we have come across the cause of rates now. The cause of autism is still unknown. What was happening is that the umbrella we are having, we were having in DSM-4, all the conditions were having this common factor that none of their cause was known. It was unknown. Though vigorous scientific researches are going on, but still it is unknown even today. But rates cause, we know it now. Rates is having a definite defined cause. So that's why rates is no more 
into the um i'm saying that it's it's no more into this diagnostic criteria anymore it has become a separate diagnosis itself outside the umbrella outside asd because the cause is known it's a separate disorder altogether so what is the difference between rates and autism whereas many people with autism avoid eye contact those with rates syndrome often learn to use eye movements to communicate their wishes such a marked difference so the autistic population is avoiding eye contact they do not communicate through their eyes but rate syndrome they communicate a lot through their eyes so there is a marked difference movement problems in people with rates is much more severe as i said most of them are immobile most of them are having severe gross and fine motor def deficits and they cannot function so uh, but autism the case is not that in fact in autism the motor developments are quite good basically they can run they can jump they can do a lot of motor things like they are okay with that so as i said the cause is known i don't want to uh, you know fog your brain with this gene name but i have just mentioned in the slide for the information that rett syndrome has a definite cause by the mutation in the methyl cpg binding protein 2 so this is the gene we are talking about which is mec p2 gene and that is the reason for red syndrome so it is known now and so definitely prevention can be also we can look forward to the prevention uh, because until and unless the cause is known preventive ways cannot be found out so but cause of aut autism still unknown still unspecified uh so this is a big big difference with rates and autism so we can we should be having different diagnostic criteria for rates uh it cannot be put under asd anymore as you can see so that is there okay now i'm coming to the last part the last part is pdd uh, uh, pdd nos as you remember now let's know what is pdd now pdd the full form is pervasive developmental disorders pervasive means spreading across the word pervasive means spreading across so the developmental disorders which are spreading across a wide range we have put together in under pervasive developmental disorders this is nothing but autism spectrum disorders umbrella pdd is equal to asd umbrella umbrella we saw in dsm 4 is the same thing pdd pervasive developmental disorders are characterized by delay in developmental and social and communication skills i am repeating it again and again all the conditions under the umbrella were having social communication deficits all of them having repetitive movements repeated uh, stereotypical patterns all these are common okay so that's why they are put under asd umbrella and as they are spreading across a wide range it is known as pdd pervasive developmental disorders you might get prescriptions from the doctors from the psychologists from the rehab professionals written for your child in the prescription pdd pdd nos query a question mark this kind of things are written in prescriptions so this is what pdd is all about so that umbrella just remember the visual umbrella that is pdd now parents may note symptoms as early as infancy although the typical age of onset is by 3 years of age as i said the symptoms are present since birth but uh, parents become aware of it by 3 years of age actually so now if we know what is pdd now let's come to what is pdd nos pdd nos in dsm 5 is not included again it probably will not be diagnosed by an up to date physician as i said it's officially not included rather those who once would have received a diagnosis of pdd nos earlier might now receive a asd diagnosis with a severity rating pdd nos means you are having some features of autism but you cannot be diagnosed with autism 
you are not meeting the entire diagnostic criteria of autism. We have diagnostic tests. So we have the scoring patterns, diagnostic tests, all are there. So if a child is not scoring enough on those diagnostic tests to be diagnosed for autism, but still having a lot of features in him, that child is placed under PDD-NOS, Pervasive Developmental Disorder. Yes, but not specified, not otherwise specified. We cannot specify exactly what is the condition, but the child is having features of PDD, but cannot be scored. So this is how this, this children are placed under PDD-NOS, used to place in DSM-4. Right now in DSM-5, they will come under ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorders, maybe with C less severity. The severity will be less. Since 2013, people who were once diagnosed as having PDD-NOS, autism disorder are now placed in the overall autism spectrum category, as I said. The diagnosis is most often called atypical autism, autistic tendencies, autistic traits in a person. As I said, the features are present, but I cannot say the child is having ASD. So that child will be diagnosed with uh, autistic tendencies, or autistic traits, atypical autism. Previously, that child used to have a diagnosis of PDD-NOS, not otherwise specified. Now the difference is it would be written as atypical autism, autistic tendencies, autistic traits in a person. So this is the difference from DSM-4 to DSM-5 we are having right now. I'm coming to a question. Uh, let me just finish this, finish this section because I'll lose track of it right now. Okay, so when PDD-NOS is diagnosed, as I said, a child may have received a diagnosis of PDD-NOS if he or she fell into the following categories. Now, what are the categories? The child is high functioning, but is experiencing mild cognitive issues or language delay that would prevent an Asperger diagnosis. See, see the condition of the clinician. The child is high functioning. Then the child can be Asperger's. But the child is not Asperger's because the child is having language issues, language delay. An Asperger child won't be having language delay. So there comes the difficulty. So then, then where will I put this child? So this child is put into PDD-NOS. Now, did you get it? That why we cannot place this child in a particular zone and a particular condition? Because if the child is not meeting the diagnostic criteria. So, a uh, high functioning child with no language delay but co mild cognitive issues will be definitely placed under Asperger's. But high functioning cognitive issues are there, but no language delay is there. So, PDD NOS, we cannot put into those conditions. So adults with PDD NOS and Asperger's usually have better social skills and are more likely to live independently and be employed as well. As I said, the severity is much less. So PDD NOS are on the high functioning range and the severity of symptoms is much less. Their functional ability is much better. So they can have employment, they can um, do some level of academics as well. They, their independent living will be uh, we can expect to, to have them earn an independent living to some extent. Okay, uh, there will be problem with social skills, definitely. But otherwise, okay. Now I'm coming to the question. When should one go for a child diagnostic test to check? Oh, I'm coming to it. I have a slide for that. And how do we as a parent can identify if he or she requires such diagnostics clinically by specialists? Do we all have certain level of such disorder? No. Uh, <laughs> we don't have such uh, certain level of disorder is something it's not politically correct. But we can say that we can have some features, you know, but not disorder. Uh, as I said, and I want to repeat it 100 times, that the intensity of the symptoms must be enough to put a 
an hindrance to your daily living functionality that is very important otherwise no disorder can be diagnosed yeah so there are definite diagnostic criteria there are diagnostic tests there are proper scoring systems so it's not that that okay i am feeling um oh i am feeling so tense today i must be having anxiety disorder no you are not having anxiety disorder i am in such a low mood i am suffering from depression these are very loosely used terms but clinically you are not having depression until and unless you are properly diagnosed with that diagnosis is very important because diagnosis has a standardized format of testing so it's not just that on monday i had low mood i met a friend in the evening monday evening and i said oh i'm having depression no you're not having depression you're just having a low mood today so there is a difference so intensity has to be strong enough to stop you operating occupation personal social all these three circles will be jeopardized so that kind of intensity has to be present for the diagnosis of a disorder present okay uh now i'm coming to the slide which will be helpful for the parents and uh, neighbors teachers anybody so put it in a very as you can see my disorder r has gone out so autism spectrum disorder i'm just summing up it's a developmental disorder the symptoms will be manifested during the developmental years and developmental years is 0 to 18 years but with autism we can definitely find uh, by 3 years repetitive behavior pattern extremely restricted pattern difficulty in communication lack of eye contact with anyone challenges in behavioral and social aspects extreme fear of simple and ordinary things as i said in my name is khan extreme fear for the yellow color which which is nothing to be afraid of actually try to avoid contact and interaction with others not much interested in social interactions at, actually children with asd are unable to give joint attention which i specified it's a very important part they won't be following your joint attention pointing and all of that so these are some of the things which you can remember now these are the red flag signs i'm coming to if you are having this flag signs for your child you can you should definitely be consulting uh you will be consulting whom i'm saying that so as you can see i like to make it more broad so slow or no response to name being called it's a 2 year old child you're calling him by name he is not responding to it is not looking back when somebody is calling from the back or is not coming to you delayed or absence of gestures like pointing not following the pointing slow rate of language development yes age appropriate language development is not happening there is a speech delay there is a limited vocabulary uh when a child should be talking about 900 words and the child is saying just five words so there is a very uh, limited vocabulary signs of echolalia or repeated words or phrase now this i need to explain uh, what is echolalia echolalia is a classical autistic speech pattern they echo your words if you ask what is your name he you will say what is your name same echoing your words this echolalia can be two ways one is immediate immediate is you are asking right now what is your name he is saying what is your name that is the immediate echolalia you are having immediate echoing there is delayed echolalia happening what is delayed echolalia suppose uh, the child is right now in school and he is rocking his body and somehow he is repeating the words oh i can't take you any more i can't take you any more i can't take you any more he is just doing this now this must be something which he has heard yesterday evening at home he is echoing it right now in school one day after out of the context there is no social context he is just doing it at random 
echoing the words of others in a different social context in a different time that is a delayed echolalia and repetitive speeches your own speech you are repeating echolalia is repeating other speech you are echoing others words but repetitive speech pattern is when you are repeating your own words like i said i'll eat i'll eat e t t t t t he wants to eat his tiffin maybe and then he will just repeat it long so that's the repetitive speech pattern we are and mostly speaking single words as i said not talking in phrase not using descriptive exclamatory words like oh wow what a beautiful scene no this kind of expressions are not coming in water picture dog barking you know this monotonous single words expressions will come more those who are having speech 50% of the population are not having speech 50% are having but they are having a a very stereotypical pattern of speech actually it's not the way we converse okay this is uh, what i wanted to show you because this is important so these are the red flag signs um for if you find this red flag signs in a child definitely you should be consulting um consult your pediatrician or your child's doctor but unfortunately i must say this on record that the doctors are not um they, they they do not actually guide the parents with the channel where should be they actually going so you then there should you can be referred to clinical psychologist or rehab psychologist special educators any institutes who deal with special needs kids special needs kids any institutes or rehab institutes for special needs neuro neurological special needs developmental disorders dealing you can definitely go to them they have opds there will be professionals to test and diagnose them both government and non government institutes institutes so these are the places you can go and take the proper suggestions and get the diagnosis done so that you can start the early intervention as soon as possible so i would just like to sum up because i need to sum up um uh, too much of complex uh, things went on in this session so i would just like to brief what i said what can be your takeaway from today's discussion the takeaway can be that in dsm 4 we have the ast umbrella with five conditions under in dsm 5 the umbrella term is no more there these conditions are not getting separate diagnosis they all now get autism spectrum diagnosis with different severity specifications among this cdd is no more diagnosed rets is having a different diagnosis because the cause is known it's a different genetic mutation cause so it has getting a different diagnosis and coming to asperger is not diagnosed separately it is now high functioning autism pdd nos gets diagnosed as atypical autism or autism tendencies or traits so this is how uh this range is functioning right now in dsm 5 now all of these are having common social communication deficits speech deficits non verbal communication deficits repetitive motor movements all of these are common limited interests but there are certain differences like if we talk about the range then the functionality is much better in asperger and pdd nos asperger is not having any language delay pdd nos can have language delays but cognitive difficulties will be there for both of them both can be high functioning but both can be have both are having social and communication difficulties and the rest of autism population they will be having uh, usually good with the gross motor skills they are having difficulty with fine motor skills they will be having severe sensory issues behavioral issues uh hyperactivity can come along with that uh restlessness and all sort of things adhd uh, symptoms so um 
this is in a nutshell and as i the last two slides the flag signs the speech pattern please take care of kids when you when i'm talking about toddlers 2 3 years old take care of the play pattern of the child very very important if your child is playing with something uninteresting for hours and not meaningfully like the child is having the car in his hand and the the child is just you know putting it upside down and just whirling the wheels like this for hours and not playing the card meaningfully like the other kids are playing it's a red flag sign the play pattern of the child is very very important please observe whether your child is playing as per the age or meaningfully with the objects the objects are being meaningfully manipulated or not that is a very very important thing in case of autism they play non meaningfully they are just engrossed they are just obsessive about certain object they are not playing so that is the difference so please take note of this they won't be doing pretend play they won't be do, uh, dressing up doll or bathing or feeding doll they won't be doing such things so pretend play will be lacking um there will be obsessive patterns of as to inanimate object the non living object they find more attachment with non living objects than with human beings so the connection is lacking over there so please take note of these things and if you find this signs do consult a rehab professional in your nearby institute where you get it okay so that's it shushmita i'm done yeah thank you so much and peter for such a wonderful session any queries uh, please uh, we are uh, already it's a uh, 7 11 7 15 maybe two to three questions i think you can take arpita i'm just uh, if there's i'm just not getting to hear much the sound is very low what i'm hearing can you hear me now am i audible mm. i can hear you but it's extremely low when i'm straining my ears to hear you so others uh, others uh, can you hear me am i audible no 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 it's yes ma'am yes ma'am i can hear you okay yes yeah so that that reason i i just want to if you are having questions then i can just join from my other device actually so that i can hear no i think others from others you will have the same problem you just try and see maybe from my device you can have that problem but from others do you find the same issue no it's it's same it's same when others are asking me questions i'm facing the same problem okay 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 yeah. so it's okay you can ask me i'm just joining from other device so so that i can hear well all right okay ma'am thank you bye bye yeah anyone have any question just put it across to arpita but we cannot take more than 3 to 4 questions okay. 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 arpita uh, yeah your microphone is off um no but i'm talking from the other device ah uh, yeah i got it i got it yeah please carry on others no question yeah. no question everyone understood everything yeah no, ma'am i have one yeah, i have Jenny. one question yeah jenny please uh, ma'am i just wanted to ask you said that there are centers and there are uh, people who are available for such kind of children whom we can refer to but at this moment when we tell parents parents are not ready to accept even to go to those centers how to convince them uh, like when we find some kind of yes, uh, yes, yes. it's it's, it's better uh, it's better to convince them uh, through doctors the pediatrician who is looking the um, because they have they have faith in the doctor okay so um, every child has a pediatrician okay since birth so naturally uh, so if we can um, actually uh, communicate this to the pediatrician and refer from there i think that might work and the parents might have some kind of acceptance to go through the center and there is another way is like you said at the early age 
when it is found we can help them but you know in some places parents are not ready to go and yet when they reach in standard 8 then there are uh, centers government centers which directly give them certificate and they are made to sit for the final exams where they get a help and parents are satisfied with that they literally don't want to go through this process yeah i know i know as parental denial is a major issue um but we have to fight through it there is no other way out we just will we have to just go on with your uh, you know just mm, make them aware talk 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 make them comfortable breaking the ice we have to practice this it's a long way it won't happen overnight and there will be uh, maybe 40% of cases where you will never be able to break the denial but but if we can at least work for 60% that that is also a huge thing so ma'am we are trying i am literally trying in my school but when parents once twice they met third yeah, time onwards they don't is. answer our call they are not answering our calls don't come to me yeah i understand even even we are trying so it's it's a long process going on uh, i am also getting quite a uh, well aware parents that is also there it's not that it's absent it's there but uh, definitely with the um, majority of the parents it becomes difficult for them to accept and seek the correct profession uh, professional help they should be seeking at the right age so and and the lot of medical shopping goes on they goes to velo they goes to demands and this and that for all of this 10 years gone and the child becomes rigid and after 12 years you cannot train them so a lot of things are happening actually so it's a part of the profession so we have to deal with that we'll try thank our you. best and continue thank you ma'am hello thank you hello yes hello i can hear you okay um, thank you for the presentation um so as part of the rates um the rates that you spoke about you mentioned that some of the developmental gains are not reversible they cannot come back again after 2 years after 2 years is when the uh, rates set we, we have the we see the onset of rates syndrome and you are saying that the developmental gains do not come back again is there any reason why no i won't be able to explain you the reason that why the regression is irreversible but uh, as rates is a it, it, it some case it's it's actually a very severe form the neurological damage is so severe that it becomes difficult to revive can you hear me yes i can hear you okay okay then okay then the second question if you have a child who um, is has difficulty moving around like he didn't used to stand and everything suddenly the child is moving about uh, is unable to stay at one place what what can you do about it um uh, see there it's not about only with rates or uh, it's it's also with a very high population with cerebral palsy as well um very severe spastic kids they they are immobile they are bed bound uh they are paralyzed uh, with the lower portion of the body so in so for that the parenting is very difficult um you have so to take care has- of them with they are like a lot of uh, yeah so they they will be they will not be having that quality of life and in most of the cases the span of life is also not the normal span okay all right thank you okay so i think i can wind up now Yeah, I think so, Arpita. No more questions. I hope so. Thank you so much, Arpita, for such a wonderful and informative session. Your sessions are always really very interesting, and we learn a lot from you. The way you explain and everything goes very fine. Thank you so much. Waiting for such wonderful sessions. 
more and Thank more you. to come. Thank you. I hope everyone really enjoyed good. today's session and uh, it was really wonderful. I hope so. Right? Thank you, yes. Yeah. Okay. The way she explains yeah. is wonderful. Thank you. I thought it would be difficult, technical and medical. So I need to simplify it. So let me explain it in a very easy jargon. So I thought and I think everything is clear to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you ma'am. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So much. Yeah. Bye. 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 So let's wind up and thanks once again, Arpita. Good night. Good night. Bye, ma'am.